Hi everyone, and welcome back to another weekly math video. In this video, we are going to find the value or values of k that make the function continuous. Hi there, my name is Christy and I'm a math teacher and I bring weekly math videos to you about a variety of topics. And this week's video comes from a calculus class in which you will be commonly asked uh, to solve this problem. And I kind of like it because it requires a higher level of problem solving. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure to click subscribe and check out my channel like I said, of the variety of math videos that I have. And as you watch this video, if you're finding it to be a value, make sure to give it a like and comment below about any questions you have or any comments you have. I love hearing from those who watch my video and it helps other people just like you to find this video so that it can help them as well. So like I said, in this video, we're gonna be finding the value or values of K that make the function continuous. And in this problem, I am going to reference the definition of continuity. So if you'd like to see another video that I've made where I teach about the definition of continuity, click here to see that video. So let's get started. The first step in the definition of continuity is that you want to make sure that the function exists at the x value in question, which in this problem is going to be negative 3. So I like to first think about what is the value of the function at negative 3. And you have to determine whether you're going to use the top function or the bottom function. And since the bottom function has a domain when x is less than or equal to negative 3, I'm going to be using that function because I wanted to determine the value of the function at negative 3 when x is equal to negative 3. So I want to plug in negative 3 for the x value and just by switching around those terms you can see that I get negative 3k. So that all looks good and then also for the function to be continuous you have to think about the limit as we are approaching negative 3 from both the left and the right sides because you want that limit first of all to equal each other but then also equal the value of the function at negative 3. So step 2 is where we determine the limit as x approaches negative 3 from both the left and the right sides. So let's look from the left and for approaching negative 3 from the left, I'm going to use the bottom function again because that's where we have in the domain x values that are less than negative 3, and therefore we would be approaching negative 3 from the left. So once again, we would be plugging in negative 3 for x, and I can simply plug it in because k times x would be a linear function. It is a continuous function, and therefore I can simply plug in negative 3 for the x value. And now let's find the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the right-hand side of f of x, which is using the function in the top because the top function has a domain of x values that are greater than negative 3 and thus would be approaching negative 3 from the right. Let's plug in negative 3 as the x value. And I would have k squared minus 18. Now, for the limit as x approaches negative 3 to exist, which we want that to be true for a continuous function, we would need to set these equal to each other. Therefore, setting the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the left-hand side of f of x equal to the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the right-hand side of f of x. And so setting those equal, let's see, we have negative 3k equals k squared minus 18. And now we would have to solve this, and I'm guessing we're gonna have two values of k. And I will tell you, as a calculus teacher myself, it's the algebra that always is most challenging for my students in a problem like this. So let's get to the algebra. We would first want to add the 3k over, which is something that uh, my students don't automatically think of first. So as I add the 3k over and write this uh, quadratic in standard form, I would have 0 equals k squared plus 3k minus 18, which I would solve this by factoring. So this quadratic factors into, it looks like this would be k plus 6 and k minus 3. Setting each of these factors equal to 0, we will be able to solve for our values of k, and we get k equals negative 6 and k equals positive 3. 
And these are the values of k that would make this function continuous. And the great thing about a problem like this is you could check your answer. So you could think about, okay, what would this piecewise function be if x were equal to negative 6 or 3. So let's try a k value. Sorry, I think I said x equals negative 6 or 3. I meant k. So plugging in a k value of negative 6, let's see, we would get 36 plus 6x for a domain of x is greater than negative 3. And then you would get negative 6 times x for x values that's less than or equal to negative 3. And then you could use the definition of continuity. Like I said, um, I've recorded a video in the past on the definition of continuity to check this. And checking it requires plugging in negative 3 or finding f of negative 3, which you would plug it into the bottom function right there, and you would get a positive 18. And then we would check the limit from the left and the right to make sure those are equal. And then we would check that f of negative 3 does equal the value of the limit. And you can do the same thing by plugging in a k value of 3 to double check that. So that's it. We found the values of k that would make this function continuous, and those values of k are negative 6 and 3. Once again, I really hope these videos are bringing value to you and helping you in your math classes. If they are, give it a like, comment below, and subscribe if you haven't already. That way you are notified as I post weekly videos that hopefully are helping you in your mathematics classes. Have a great day, everyone, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.